Hello and welcome to another episode of Lost Gotham TV. This is the second episode in the series reviewing Richard Lehman's books. And I'm going to just jump right in. So, the, the next book I'm going to review... Um, chronologically isn't sort of uh, the, the next book that he published, but I thought it would be a good idea to maybe follow through on the Beast House Chronicles series and look at book two. Uh, I'm going to look real quick to see when this was uh, copyrighted. So, uh, 86. So, we've, we've jumped forward six years from the cellar, and we finally have a sequel, and it is called The Beast House. And again, this is the uh, this was published in ninety. This is the British ninety two. Yeah, this is the this was published in nineteen ninety two, and um, it's the British edition. Again, I love this series of books. The cover art that's on here. Again, this one doesn't have his name. I believe it's Steve Crisp is the 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 cover artist, and. Uh, so this continues the story from the cellar, and so it's based on uh, the titular uh, Beast House, okay? Which is, uh, if you haven't seen the other video and you don't know the book, it, it is a a house somewhere in uh, California, uh, a little bit north of San Francisco, in a fictional uh, town, and it is a a a house that is is haunted by a a beast which has been around for nearly a hundred years and this book um even though it was published in 86 i believe it is still set kind of in the late 70s it's set um a year or so maybe about 18 months after the seller and Without going into too much spoiler territory, it has some returning characters, and uh, it, it, it's it's a whole new story, kind of based around the the beast that haunts or hunts in the beast house. And as I explained in the earlier video, for me, the Beast House Chronicles got better with every book. So this one is a little bit thicker. There's a little bit uh, more story. There's a little bit more meat on its bones, so to speak. I'll pause here for you to groan. And so the, I, have, I have one major issue with it, which is uh, if you read the book and you pay attention and stuff, the cover art, as beautiful as it is and as much as I like it, it that it's like a, a kind of like a continuity design issue uh, because it's a it's a brick building with a window in the story it's a wood building with uh, a window i believe maybe i'm wrong maybe maybe i'm 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 splitting hairs and being too nitpicky here um but i i love the artwork and i love the book they just don't match for some reason but anyway so uh, this one introduces some new characters and uh, some of the story revolves around them following along behind the characters from the first book and trying to kind of not necessarily figure out what happened directly to them. We as readers find out what happened to them. But uh, they're, they're introducing the same Beast House mystery as a whole. And they come at it from a slightly different uh, direction. And so it, it is different. Even though it is a very similar story, it is different. We have different characters, different personalities, different things are going on. And so I think uh, Richard was very uh, successful in that. Uh, for me, it, it's a great sequel. Sequels are not always the best, and this was a good one. And, and so again, solid read, better than the seller, uh, but still for me, I'm not I'm not loving the beast character. I find it a little far fetched, and um, again, I don't want to give away too many spoilers about the character or about the book, but it's it's far fetched. Um, for me, it I talked about this last episode. 
critics of layman's who complain about the sexual content of his books i think this might you know this series the beast house chronicles might be a lot of where that comes from because not just of the level of sex but the way in which it is part of the story and just that alone i think for me keeps it from being um for for these books ranking among my favorite of his books but definitely a solid read. I definitely uh, recommend it. And yeah, I don't really. I I debated on whether or not to try to give these books, as I read them, some kind of rating system in terms of, um, like a scale of one to one hundred for for sexual content or for rape or something like that, because. It is definitely something that would keep some some people from wanting to read his books. And I would like as many people as possible to read his books. Because I've enjoyed every single one of them. I may have enjoyed some more than others, but I've enjoyed all of his books. And, you know, his his wife Anne and his daughter Kelly, I'm sure, are receiving hopefully receiving you know residuals and things from the sale of these books and even if it's just by extension you know if you can buy these books new um if you can afford them maybe buy some special editions and stuff and and hopefully some money is still going to richard's family uh in some way i mean of course you know pick them up used to pick them up any way that you need to in order to enjoy them so yeah okay i rambled a little bit again I'm not going to apologize because I apologize too much. But read his books and you won't be sorry. All right. That's enough bad humor. I'll let you go. And I'll see you next time.